morning and welcome to worship. On behalf of the Congregation of Christ Lutheran Church in Fredericksburg, Virginia, I welcome you in the name of Jesus. My name is Pastor Ann and I serve as the pastor of the congregation. In today's worship service, you'll hear from me. You'll also hear from our lay assisting minister, Olivia, as well as from Pastor Lou, my ministry partner at the congregation, and from the Reverend John Wirtz, the Director of Evangelical Mission and the Assistant to the Bishop of the Virginia Synod of the ELCA. John is our guest preacher for today. You may wonder, what is a synod? Synods unite the work of congregations within their geographic areas, serve as regional support, and guide pastoral and other staff candidates. The Virginia Synod is made up of more than 150 congregations that proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of Christ in faithful, bold, and serving ways. As a way of walking together through the pandemic, synodical leaders are joining congregations for online worship by offering a sermon for use in worship. Today, we give thanks for the ministry of Pastor John Wirtz and his partnership in the gospel. Before we begin our worship service, Pastor Lou and I want to remind all who are listening, who are worshiping together, that you are welcome to be part of the wider life of this congregation. We encourage you to just to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Facebook at CLC Fred. That's C L C F R E D. If you want to learn more about the ministries of the congregation or learn more about what it means to be a Christian with a Lutheran expression, please reach out to me or Pastor Lou via email or on Facebook Messenger. Now let us pause for a few moments of silence as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of the Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we would have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience 
and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from Jeremiah chapter 15 verses 15 through 21. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words came became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name. O Lord, God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you that to this a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another is showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. 
Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay any one evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will hear burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Greetings, I'm Pastor John Wirtz. I'm one of the assistants to the bishop in the Virginia Synod. It's a pleasure to be with you as we gather for digital worship this week. Our gospel reading today is from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and rebuked him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? The Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Live in harmony with one another. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. That was some of Paul's advice to the emerging Christian community in Rome on how the followers of Jesus should live and relate to one another. Let me read it again. For in our world, when people try to manipulate faith to support their opinions, in our world, where sadly the word judgmental is often the first word that comes to mind for non-Christians when they're asked to describe Christians, in our world, which looks more and more like a first century world that Paul and Peter and those other early Christians were trying to reach. In our world, it seems to me that Paul's words to the Romans are critically important for us to hear as we try to figure out what it looks like to be people of faith in a conflicted world. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Live in harmony with one another. Do not repay anyone evil 
for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Paul's guidance is rather direct. And yet, despite Paul's explicit instructions, we see Christians battling one another over who preaches the good news of Jesus correctly and who doesn't. We see instances of hateful behavior, angry words, and evil playing out in daily life and especially online. We see folks who are so convinced that they are correct about everything that instead of looking for opportunities to compromise, they simply believe that those who disagree with them just need to leave. And all I can think is how did we, within the Christian movement, get from Paul saying, if it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all, How do we get from that to where we are today? As I thought about this, I've come to the conclusion that fear is powerful and insidious. The reality is that we live in a fearful time. COVID-19 has made people scared and anxious. Fighting the pandemic has created isolation and separation. Cultural upheaval is ongoing. Old wounds about race and injustice are being laid bare for all to see. We have allowed ourselves to become red and blue. And at times we have forgotten that long before we claimed red or blue, we were claimed by God. We were washed in the waters of baptism and we were marked with the cross of Christ forever. And I get it. Things just aren't as secure as we'd like them to be. And that can be unnerving and that can be unsettling. But I wonder if we as a people of God truly grasp the impact that fear is having on our lives. If we grasp how it is changing and transforming the way we look at the world, how in some cases it is causing us to forget what God is saying to us. I wonder if we realize how fear is shaping our attitudes towards others and towards God. And while it's true that fear is strong, I am convinced that in the end, God is stronger. Fear and hatred are strong, but I'm convinced that God's love and hope are ultimately stronger. Fear and anger may seem like they can provide an immediate fix to whatever problem is in front of you, but I'm convinced that God's love and peace are what actually provide long-term solutions. Now, please understand. I don't know how to fix all the problems of the world. I don't have a specific plan for ending racism and hatred. I don't have a specific plan to treat and prevent COVID-19. I don't have a specific plan to encourage cooperation among our political leaders. But thanks to Paul's words to the Romans, I do know what it looks like to live a transformed life of faith rooted in God's love and in grace. And I truly believe that as we allow ourselves to be transformed by God's love, as we incorporate these teachings of Paul and the teachings of Jesus into our lives, I truly believe that hope and peace will begin to overcome fear. And I can't help but think that our world would be transformed if enough people began to live as Paul described today. Now, I I fully realize that what Paul is laying out isn't necessarily easy to do, especially in today's world. But whether the things Paul talks about are easy or not, they are godly things. And it is a way of life that God calls us to be about. 
God calls us to that life, not to make our lives difficult, but ultimately because God knows that this is how we are at our best together. Let love be genuine, Paul says. Hate, reject what is evil. Love what is good. Outdo one another in showing honor. Persevere in prayer. Extend hospitality to strangers. And those, mind you, seem like the easy ones on Paul's list. Because he also says, bless those who persecute you. Live in harmony with one another. Associate with the lowly. Do not repay evil for evil. If your enemies, your enemies are hungry, feed them. Stop and think about what that means for a moment. About what it means to live a transformed life of faith in a sinful world. This is not simply help people who are in the way of the hurricane. This is show love and kindness to the person who's been mean to you. Show love and kindness to the person who annoys you. Show love and kindness to the person with whom you have, well, vehement disagreements about politics. Paul doesn't say you have to agree with everyone or make everyone your best friend. And Paul certainly doesn't say that you need to allow yourself to be abused by someone or remain in an abusive relationship. Now, I think what Paul is talking about is living, loving, and treating everyone with that same love and respect and caring that God has for God's people. For Paul, being transformed by God's grace, being transformed by God's unconditional love, mercy, and forgiveness means living a life of grace toward others. We can see examples in the world around us of what Paul is talking about. We can see examples of what it looks like when we follow Paul's teachings, when we follow Jesus' teachings, and what it looks like when we don't. How about reject evil, hold fast to what is good? Well, millions of people these days around the world are publicly rejecting hatred, the violence, the oppression of racism. They're proclaiming that Black Lives Matter, they are beginning dialogues, and they are trying to work together for a better future. It'll be a long and hard and painful process, but it's a process of rejecting evil and holding fast to what is good. How about love one another with mutual affection? Outdo one another in showing honor. Serve the Lord. Contribute to the needs of the saints. All around the Synod, congregations have launched or expanded feeding ministries to meet the needs created by COVID-19. We're loving one another. We're serving the Lord. We're contributing to the needs of the saints. How about bless those who persecute you? Bless and do not curse them. Well, if you watch enough political ads or speeches, you know that this is a tough one for people. But words matter. And when we refuse to escalate a war of words, when we refuse to retweet or repost the hate, then I think we begin to build a bridge to a better place. Live in harmony with one another. Unfortunately, we most often get to see examples of when this doesn't happen proclaimed on television or online. But look around your actual community this week. Look around. Look at your neighbors. I think you'll see examples of people looking out for each other, supporting one another, and working together to build up the whole community. If it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Now, this one's hard in today's world, too. We want to be safe. We want our children to be safe. It's not that the text says you have to put yourself in a dangerous position. But we 
don't need to let the fear rule our lives. Text says, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. In other words, given the choice, seek peace, not conflict. And if you can't live peaceably, Paul suggests that the the best way to overcome evil is not through vengeance or violence, but through good. Conflict happens. Sometimes conflict is unavoidable. But when that happens, our fears may encourage us to to seek the bigger or better weapon to, to destroy our enemy. That's not what Paul is saying. That's not what Jesus is teaching. Instead of trying to cause more and more damage, how about we help others to find hope and meaning in their lives? We share food with the hungry. We give water to the thirsty. We find shelter for the homeless. Those ultimately are the things that bring lasting peace. Fear and anger are strong. God's love and grace is far, far stronger. The transformed life that Paul describes will not necessarily be easy, and it may not conform to the ways of the world around us. But the good news for you and for me is that as we are transformed, by God's grace and love, as we seek to follow the way of life that Paul describes, now I'm convinced we will discover the whole healthy life that God wants for God's people. A life built not on fear, but rather built upon God's grace and God's love. Amen. At this time, we take a moment to cast all our cares upon Jesus as he cares for all of us. We offer prayer petitions from our community. I invite you to pray with me. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you, that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ, and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that's in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing. And heal the sick. This day we also pray for all those affected by social inequities, civil strife, and natural disaster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us to overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I leave you with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our service is now ended. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.